Subroutines can be used to organize code in a variety of ways, all of which result in the same behavior. There is no one correct way to do this. How you choose to organize things will depend on many factors. Going back to our experiment, we will use subroutines to facilitate the specific things we need to do to easily add practice trials. One block of code that we want to reuse is the main loop that presents trials. This loop is entirely controlled by the data in the trial list variable. We can use this code to present any sequence of trials we like by placing all of it inside a subroutine which takes the array as an argument. In addition, we may want to optionally show feedback, so that will be a second argument. One thing to notice about this subroutine is that it is using variables that are created outside of itself, such as colored boxes, stim event, etc. This is permissible as long as those variables are declared in the program before the point at which the subroutine is defined. It is common in PCL subroutines to use arguments for the things that are changing while accessing other variables, particularly stimulus object variables, that are declared before it in the program. If you analyze the program at this point, you will also notice that presentation complains about using the name trial list for the subroutine argument name because we already have a trial list variable declared earlier. In some programming languages, you are allowed to use the same name for, var for variables inside subroutines or any nested scopes, and those variables will hide the earlier variables. However, currently presentation does not allow this, so we will rename our earlier array of trial information. Finally, we can optionally show the feedback based on the show feedback variable. Now we can run the main trials by calling the subroutine using that array. Running this program, we should see the same behavior as before, but without the feedback. The same subroutine can now be used for practice trials as well, but we need to figure out what trials to run for practice. You may construct a trial list array to contain anything you like. For simplicity, we will have our practice trials contain every color position combination once. In this case, we can reuse the code we already wrote for constructing the trial list by making another subroutine. The element that changes in the two cases is the number of times to repeat, so we make that an argument. Next, we will have this subroutine return the array that it creates. When returning an array value from a subroutine, we must specify the number of dimensions for the array. This uses the same syntax we saw for array reference arguments in the previous tutorial. After changing the array variable name to something more appropriate, we return its value with a return statement. We also need to use the repeat count argument for the inner loop condition. Armed with these two subroutines, we can now write a concise main program.
Run this to confirm the correct number of practice trials with feedback followed by the main trials. Later, we will add a way to differentiate between practice and main trials in the log file so that you can easily analyze only the main trials. Finally, we'll add a break after the practice trials. For this, we can make a trial that displays text and ends with any response. Something similar can be used to give instructions at the beginning of the experiment. Here we use the max text width parameter to have presentation wrap the text for us if necessary. You may also insert new lines at specific places if desired. Run this to see the break between the practice block and the main block. 